Right, I waited 10 years to get there. <laughs> this gentleman, he needs no introduction. The man himself, Mr. Jerry Dammers. I just want to say, if it wasn't for this man, we wouldn't be here now, sitting here, doing this. So thank you so much, Jerry. It's all your fault, man. Right, we're just going to ask a few questions. Nothing too much, but, you know... Oh, shush, that's good, I like that. Thank you very much for doing it for us. Anyway, all right, are we all right? With my, do we need microphones? Yes. 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 All right, okay. Yes. All right, fair enough. It's just that I have to, I'm sort of looking in here and I can't look at Jerry at the same time. That's right. But, we all right? Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, you got a wire there. Can I have the road crew, please? Oh, the road is. Where's Trevor? Trevor? Is he still here? Right, right let's get started. I'm only joking. I'm only joking. Right, Jerry, first question. Right. And this is the question we always ask, first of all, to all our guests. It's not so much about influences, it's about. When you were growing up, what was the sort of music you were listening to? What was coming into your ears in your in the household? You know, what was on the radio and what were your parents playing? Ah, oh, well, my parents were playing classical music, church music. <laughs> um, but me, I guess the first, oh gosh, the first record I ever bought was The Yardbirds, uh, For Your Love. And the first album was... Uh, Rolling Stones number two, but I hate to admit that was I was still in Sheffield then. Oh God! So I came to Coventry when I was uh, ten, and uh, yeah, I liked everything. I was um, I liked the Who with my main band, Small Faces, um, and but I also liked soul music a lot. Um, Otis Redding, Sam and Dave, all that stack stuff. Uh, I was into that, and I was also uh, got into. I, I liked reggae as well. When it first, I didn't know much about reggae till like 1970, and uh, all those those tracks that got in the charts. And um, yeah, I liked them. But uh, I liked to. I like in those days. You were only supposed to want, like one kind of music, but uh, I was a bit different. And uh, <laughs> I liked all, all kinds of music. Well, um, fair play to you, yeah. I mean, what, why the piano? Why not the guitar or indeed drums? Because I think you were a bit of a drummer in the early days when you were at school. I was. I started off... Well, I had piano lessons when I was little, but I never used to practice. <laughs> and I, uh, I sort of taught myself blues, really. Um, but I also played the drums. I think I've probably told told this story before last time I was here, but that there's a church hall just down the road there and uh, I had this band called um it was called Gristle. Oh, yeah. yeah, you heard that one. Anyway, there were four of us I think and uh this guy came in to an audition on a guitar and I had no idea but like it must have been thirty years later in in uh, Mojo I read that this guy was apparently Roddy <laughs> Roddy Radiation I mean we all had long hair in those days and I never ever associated him with this guy who came to, to play the the guitar anyway he stayed for one rehearsal he reckoned I was the worst drummer he'd ever heard <laughs> and I reckon he was the worst guitarist I don't know. but um, <laughs> Anyway, the outcome of all this, he told the story to Mojo magazine and he said, and this band had a really strange name, Jerry's band, it was called Rissol. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought that was a great name for a band, Rissol. <laughs> anyway. and, and what was your first real band? Rissol. <laughs> Rissol, yeah. Um, well, yeah. Oh, golly gosh. It was, uh, that was, 
there's another band at, at, at school um, still arguing about the name now, like 40 years later. We never actually agreed on a name, but I thought it was called Southside Greeks. But um, some other people have said it's called uh, Peggy Penguin in the South. It was never called Peggy Penguin in the South. <laughs> it's nonsense. It was called. <laughs> Anyway, that's another story. But then I had my own band, Gristle, like I just told you about. In fact, I'll tell you a story about that as well, because I... Oh, God. Welcome to Coventry. I, I fell off... When I fell off my bike and I knocked my teeth out, I went over the handlebars and I knocked these teeth out and I had, a, like, a gum shield and my face was all, um, you know, scars and... Anyway, we had this this... This uh, gig, at, well, our first gig, I don't know why I'm telling you this, <laughs> on the campus highway at a youth club up there. Anyway, so we were playing sort of, I don't know what the hell it was, but kind of, there was a sax, of drums and a, a bass, and it was kind of sort of jazz in a way, I suppose. Anyway, at the back of the room is like about 30 skinheads right at the other end, and we were playing, and suddenly... This full can of coke just—I saw it coming, arcing across the the hall, and it smacked me right in the, <laughs> the face. So that was my kind of initiation into Coventry music, and I'm, I've been, you know, I've never looked back after that. I think you said you, they reckon they must have had a bit of money because it was a full can of coke. Exactly. You know? <laughs> that was Jerry's, not mine. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I thought it wasn't a ghost town in those days because they could afford a full can, you know. They would have drank it at least when it was a ghost yeah. town. Okay, we're going to move on. We won't do all these questions, of course, but uh, we're going to fast forward quite a bit. And when did the idea of the specials come to you? And the other thing is, as you mentioned earlier on, because you applied to get into Leeds University, first of all. That was your first choice, wasn't it? Uh, Leeds Art College. Well, yeah. no, I left Coventry. I went and did a foundation course at Nottingham Art College. Uh, you do a year before the main degree course. Then, yeah, I was I was crazy even then, completely crazy. I um, I decided that as an artwork, I was going to do a band. You know, like a, I don't know. I wasn't going to do any painting or anything. And they said, well, you're crazy, but if you're going to try and pull that off, you've got to go to Leeds Art College because they're the most likely to um, <laughs> to to take it because they were kind of pretty way out. And uh, luckily, that well, luckily, whatever, they, they thought I was crazy and told me to, to exit. You know, I said, I don't want to do any painting. I just want to do a band that's going to be like the, a modern version of the Who... It's going to be my artwork. It's going to be great, and they just and I played them a tape of um, Little Bitch, which I'd written already, but I'm not proud of it. But I had written it uh, when I was fifteen, and um, what was I going to say? So they showed me the door. So the rest is history. So then I came back to to Coventry, but um, yeah, otherwise I might have ended up in Soft Cell. Or... Yeah, well, I was wondering that. Do you think Two Tone could have worked in Leeds? <laughs> Two-tone could have worked in... Uh, well, it wasn't... I didn't really have two-tone in my mind at that point. But it was just a band. I didn't have it fully formed. But as life progressed, you might have come up with the idea, you know, again, which you did when you were in Coventry. I just wondered... Uh, did you ever think that that could have happened? It could have been something completely different or two-tone wouldn't have happened at all? I mean, imagine that. If you got him in Leeds, there would be no two-tone. Yeah, crazy well, sort. I don't know. There might have been. Might have been. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's impossible to say because the idea for Two Tone came, uh, well, four years later. But I always, while I was at art college, I was always playing in bands, and I always thought when I finally, but it was all covers, cover, cover versions, and I always wanted to do my own songs, but I was going to leave that till after. I left college, so I played in a, a country and western band, Lane Travis Country Trio from Levington Spa. Anybody know Lane Travis? No? 
he, 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 he supported Coventry City. He had a sky blue suit and a sky blue Stetson. <laughs> it's true. He also had the bassist who was had been in the, the Edgar Brook band. That was a very strange band, that was. And uh, also Ricky Nugent and the Loiterers. Anybody here know Mad Steve? No? 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 Oh, okay. no? Okay. And uh, was it Sissy Stone? Oh, then, yeah, then I, I, I gave up. Well, I didn't give up on the... Uh, I've got to be careful what I say. <laughs> I was going to say I gave up on commentary and went to Birmingham and <laughs> joined, <laughs> joined the Sissy Stone band, who was like a soul band, and they'd uh, won new faces. I had a lot of laughs with them. Uh, but there was another guy from Coventry called Chuck Elliott, who was in that band, who was a, a great guy as well. A uh, really good laugh. Ever. <laughs> I'm coming up with all the anecdotes. So this is done. We had to wear blue corduroy boiler suits with a zip up the front, <laughs> covered with uh, you know like um, petrol station badges. And Chuck was really funny because his was really, really tight on him. He was a bit long in the body. So and. It, uh, it never made me. I can't do it. You'd have to be Chuck, but he walked on stage like. <laughs> <laughs> if you knew Chuck, he'd laugh. So he, he was. Uh, they were. They. It wasn't a pretty sight. Put it that way. We're going round in circles. Well, they did a uh, single, didn't they? Did you play on that? The Sissy Stone single. I didn't know they did one. No, I actually own it. I own the single. I've always wondered, is Jerry on this single or not? No, I wasn't. No, no I wasn't. okay. All right. I'll make an ashtray out of it tomorrow. <laughs> what is it? What was it? I can't remember what it's called now. Pete, you started something. No. <laughs> I've got Collect to hear that. It's a collector's item if anybody wants to bid for it. I'll, Six... I'll, I'll have it. I'll have it. <laughs> I think it's a... A promo copy as well, actually. There we are. Really selling it now. It probably was a promo, because I don't think they sold any. <laughs> <laughs> well, there we are. Anyway, moving on. And we are moving on. A lovely yeah. people, though. I love Sissy Stone. was great. Really good. So, I think I know what you're going to say here. Well, what was your all-time favourite two-tone record release? Oh, what, what, the best, you think the best? Uh, Ghost Down's the best, I think. It has to be, but... But not the specials, anybody. Could it be anybody on the label? Anybody? Are you joking? Oh. Do you know something I don't know? Do you know well, what you my favourite... <laughs> the last interview you did with me, you said something about the beat, I think. Oh, Tears Pinkerton's of Assorted Colours. Oh, no, that was... That was that. <laughs> Um, no, I love the, I love the beat. Yeah, I love, I, I love the beat. I love Mary in the bathroom, but that would beat this specials, obviously. I mean, come on. Well, fair, fair enough. No, but I do love the beat. They're a great band, yeah, they were. and, and uh, I love the selector. I love Madness. Uh, they're all good bands, and uh, Bad Manners, Body Snatchers. But yeah, the beat. I, I can. Yeah, the beat are great. But, Right, another question that you're going to roll your eyes up to. Well, no, I know you will. What means the most to you, Nelson Mandela or Ghost Town? Oh. <laughs> um, well, I guess I prefer Ghost Town as a record musically, but I guess um, I guess Nelson Mandela had a, a bigger influence worldwide. Um, probably achieve more yeah. because, but uh, you know I, I, I prefer Ghost Town uh, musically so I don't know really but uh, yeah. Would you consider Nelson Mandela as being probably the, the greatest protest song ever written? <laughs> no I mean, no I mean, comment <laughs> A lot of people do, you know, uh, the fact that uh, 
it put Nelson Mandela into a lot of people's consciousness who'd never heard of him before. Um, and changed the world, basically. Yeah, but I can't say it's the greatest protest song we ever. Well, I'm saying it. I'm saying it. <laughs> I wrote it. We can. We can. No, no comment, yeah. No, it's great. It was great. It was great. Everything's great. I think it is a bit more than great, but there we are, being very modest there. No, well, it was... Well, all right, I'll, I'll, I'll go into that then. So the, the good thing about that was that, in fact, I'll mention him because he's just recently died... Um, I think about a month ago, um, I didn't, like everyone else, I didn't really know anything about Nelson Mandela, but I went to a, a concert of his 65th birthday at um, Alexandra Palace, and um, yeah, there's a, a South African musician called Julian Bahula, who was in exile in this country, who organised that concert, and he had a band, and he sang a song about Nelson Mandela, and that, that's where I got the idea for, you know, for putting that lyric to my, my song. So, you know, it's like musician passing on to musician, because obviously we were in a better position to get it on the radio and all that. So it, it was like, it shows that big things can come from little things, or musicians can pass on messages just through their music, so... And then it grew and it grew, and then I did Artists Against Apartheid, that all grew and eventually ended up with the Wembley concert. So the, the message is, you know, it's, it's a cog in the, you know, that song was a, a cog in the, it's like a watch. Small cogs and big cogs, so everybody who took part in the campaign was uh, important, because they're all cogs in this big thing, so there you go. Brilliant, thank you. All right, well, moving on, this is a question which I think a lot of people want to know the answer to. When are we going to hear the new song from Jerry Dammers? And this is yeah. my last question, by the way. I will open this out to the audience for a question. Well, hopefully not too long. <laughs> but, you know, I don't know. I, 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 I... What can I say? I might have finished it tonight, but I'm here. <laughs> oh, right. So it's my fault then. It's your fault. I completely please. destroyed it. <laughs> uh, uh, to answer seriously, um, I've got quite a, a few things in the pipeline, but um, if, you, if the truth was known, I've never ever found music easy at all, ever. And uh, I've, I've been struggling with it and, uh, you know, I just hope that eventually it'll see the light of day. And um, also, it's a struggling with my computer has eaten a lot of these things, so I've been really struggling with that. The, the, um, the, 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 the digital world is not really my forte, but luckily I've got someone who's trying to... Uh, help me rescue all this stuff but it's basically my computer died on me and ate the loads of tracks but they are kind of uh, we're getting there but it's 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 very frustrating but we'll get there in the end i hope i hope so but, you say you're struggling with it could that yeah. be another way of saying that you're actually a genius yes. uh, and, <laughs> and the fact that you're you know everything has to be exactly how you want it on the record you know no. <laughs> <laughs> not a perfectionist? No, I'm not a perfectionist. I just think it should be at least reasonably good and not too embarrassing. <laughs> but I think your body of work proves that you, you've put out some amazing stuff. And uh, I wouldn't say any of it is below par. Yeah, I know, I know you can't answer that and you know you don't want to, but no, that's, what I was the, that's say, just my view. To describe it as a body is, a, is, a, is three albums 50 years ago, but anyway. So yeah, we'll get there in the end. Uh, can I also say something else about that? Because we've been talking about Nelson Mandela and um, when, I, when I'd done that record and after the Special AKA album, then... Dali Tambo, the head of the ANC, um, 
asked me to do Artists Against Apartheid and organise all these gigs that led up to the Wembley gig. Well, it led up to the Clapham Common gig and then the Wembley gig. And um, it was, you know, I was working in an office for four years and, uh, you know, it, it did take a toll on my, it took quite a, a big toll on my career because, you know, it's, when you lose the, the momentum of it, it's not that easy to to uh, pick it up again and uh, you know it, it's it, it's hard to explain that but also it, it um, during that time I was in in what's the word in prison with a record company so I couldn't really work with anyone I couldn't make any records and it was during that time funnily enough that I got into DJing and me being me, like you say, if I do something, I try and do it well. And actually being a DJ, um, when I was doing it then, it was all jungle and new music. It's actually a full-time job doing all the research and the blah, 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 blah. And I got out of the, the, the habit of like playing or having a band and all that. So it did take a toll. But now I only play old records because I can't be bothered to keep up with the, <laughs> the crap that they make nowadays. Jungle. Okay. Jungle, lad. <laughs> no, but, um, yeah, so, so uh, yeah. I'm going to try and, you know, pick up where I left off maybe one day. But don't, don't all... Uh, don't, don't get too excited. <laughs> right, can we have a couple of questions then? First question. <laughs> on, the, on a digital point of view, any thoughts yeah. on the latest Beatles release then? I, I still haven't heard it, I'm afraid. I, I'd like to hear it, but... Um, well, is it good well I love it, but I'm a Beatles fan. But well, I'm a total Beatles fan, yeah. I mean, I'm sure I, I, I can't imagine them. About the concept of... A one and yeah, bring that so many years later. Uh, Is there any of the old Jepsons specials they might find in another twenty years time? Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. But um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's great. I think it's great that um, they've done it. Like I said, I haven't heard it yet, but I, I'm an. Uh, I've always been a total Beatles fan. I can't imagine any, any them, anything by them not being great, but I haven't actually heard it. Yeah, Chris. Yeah, um, if the specials hadn't split up, did you have any vision for what where the music would have gone, and would that have been different to the in the studio album? Um, specials didn't split up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fun by three left the specials, but yeah, I mean, hopefully it would have been somewhere between the Fun by three and the special AKA and the color field. So it's it's very sad, but you know, I think that that's where it was was going, and I, and you know, obviously the the Fun by three and color field were influenced very much by more specials. So you know, it's it's uh, don't really want to go into all that. But. That's why I didn't uh, pose any of those difficult questions, as you can probably tell. Uh, another question. Taxi for Hi, Jerry. Can you please prove an, an argument for me? Me and my friend Gabby, in 1979, I was 15, Gabby was about 13, went to a matinee concert at Tiffany's in the afternoon before you played a gig a night at Tiffany's. Can you prove that you did that? Because he believe, he don't believe me. No, I don't. <laughs> Who doesn't you believe you? Well, you played a match, <laughs> but then you did Tiffany's when you played the gig. I, th I think we probably did, but I can't actually remember. <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 did, yeah, we did that occasionally. On, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 we did that occasionally on some gigs but I can't remember it, which was I think Madness did it more often than yeah, we was 15 at the time it was great because everyone let us get on the stage with you and we were dancing to Monkey Man the best gig of my life right shall we have one last question and then we'll get on with the music hey? I'm going to ask him a question 
question. Jerry, what? the moment you thought you was onto something with the band, when did you think I'm onto something? When, when you realised or you felt? When, when did I think I was on? Well, something with a band. Well, I, um, the very well the the, uh, the very very first rehearsal, which was like um, I've never really done done my own songs, and I was in a Sissy Stone band, and I got they I wanted them to do some of my songs, but they wouldn't do it, and um, so I I realised the time has come to form my own band. And got the the very first rehearsal was with Neil Davis, Silverton on drums, Horace on bass, myself, and um, uh, singer Tim Tim Strickland. And I mean Tim wasn't great, but um, but the other four of us playing together, I thought, wow, this is really exciting. There's something happening here now, and uh, I think that was like. I can still remember that. I can remember it. It, it was just—I didn't realise you could do your own music, and it sounded that good. You know, it's just like because the only time I'd done my own music before was in Gristle and Gristle, <laughs> <laughs> Gristle. <laughs> right. Well, thank you very much, Jerry. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Keeping the anger there. Right, we're going with some music now. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. That was yeah. amazing. And um, if if we can have the, um, I'll just tell you what I'm going to do tonight when I DJ. Probably because I just done a set like this. Is is like um, a set of reggae cover versions and cover versions of some of the. The music that I loved before the specials in the like sixties cover songs and so I so I'll I'll go on with that for as long as I can and then play a bit of uh, two tone and uh, other Jamaican ska. But I I want to do so it's because it's Coventry. I'm going right back before the specials and some of the old sixties tunes. There were some fantastic reggae versions, and I'm going to play a few of those. So, but you do. If you don't want to dance, you don't have to, but you've got to make your liver quiver and, you know. <laughs>